Welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tips video. This time I'll answer a few questions from the last one about braids and braid preparation. So you can see here I've got all my parts ready. I've got some flat nose pliers, basically because I just want a smooth edge on the inside of pliers. I've got my pair of braids, uh, an unprepared guide, some lead wire soldering plates to go in the guide. I've got an old tool uh, Allen key wrench. I've got a special tool from Atan, which I will show you how to use that later. I've got also got a piece of 1.6 millimeter piano wire and again a braid brush made for me by a world champion. Okay, let's get going. So these braids are champion big mama type braids and you'll notice that they have a little dimple pressed in the braid itself. I want to get rid of that because uh, I don't like that being uh, pushing my guide and misshaping my guide. So I tend to use the flat nose pliers to squash that little dimple. Just get the most of the dimple out. Some braids don't come with that little dimple, but others do. The other thing that I will do um, I don't necessarily do it with all braid manufacturers, just some. It depends on how the clip is bent, but I can tell that when this clip is bent, the end of that clip is going to be very close to the braid itself. So what I tend to do is I just shorten them a little using just a pair of side cutters or wire cutters, or you can dremel them off. So I just shorten that a little bit like that, trim it off like so. Again, if you're left with some sharp edges, you could polish those edges off. This cut's pretty clean, pretty nice, so I don't need to do it on that, on this braid here. Now, I'll then get my old uh, Allen wrench tool, and I tend to do this over the side of the block. So it's a little bit awkward in the, in the picture. So what I'm about to do is get another little block put that on top so you can see how I'm doing this because I need to be able to get my fingers around the Allen wrench and then I'm just going to hold the braid and I'm going to run the round part not the end not the tip just the rounded part you could use an old axle in a in a old handle if you needed to but I can just run that along putting pressure being fairly even trying to turn it, then turning my braid over, doing it the same the other side. So really I'm just flattening my braid a bit and you can notice how it starts to spread out on the end. And I'm running along the braid, not running it right back from the end because then it'll all unravel and I don't want that to happen. So I'm running along the braid like that. It started to spread out at the end, but you can sort of bring it back together a little bit with your fingers like so, so it doesn't all come apart. And I'm going to use my digital caliper just to measure the thickness of that braid. So 063, 062, 061, fairly consistent within 0.02. Again, different braids flatten to different amounts, but I'm fairly happy with that, with these braids here. that I've, I'm fairly even all the way along. Check again. Yeah, I'm okay with that one. So just encourage it to come together. Then I'm going to use my little bit of piano wire. Here it is, and I'm gonna tuck it into the fold on the braid. And I'm just gonna bend it over like that. Basically, I want to make sure I don't bend it really sharp there because I want to leave some sort of thickness in the braid clip so it makes it so it's a tight fit in the guide itself. So I can bend that over and now you can see the reason why I've cut the part of the clip slightly shorter is so that it doesn't stick out onto the braid. That's important because if you were to fold your braids round the end of the clip and this part of the clip was sticking out when you have a front impact on your car this can cut the braid. And you don't want, obviously don't want to cut through your braid because then you're then the braid's falling off, your braid clip's stuck in your guide, you can't even change it. A hell of a mess and you lose loads of time. 
So trimming it back is always a good thing to do if there's a likelihood that, that when you fold it, it would be uh, forcing itself into the braid. So I fold that over and then I can just nip it down a little bit with some pliers. And I tend to just get the end of it like that. I don't know whether you can see that on the video. So I'm not squashing this end of it, I'm squashing here. So I just squash that down a little bit like that. And that just makes sure again that the, the little dimple's gone. It's slightly folded at an angle. So again, just gonna use my pliers just to straighten that up a little bit like that. Just so that you get a nice fold in the braid like so. Now I'm then gonna put I'll just do one side at a time, put my guide clips in. Now you'll see uh, in my one of my other videos, of which I'll put the link on the screen now, that I've already got a guide. I do another video where I talk about trimming up the whole guide, sanding it all down, making it all smooth and repairing the whole guide. So, uh, and then I started with some braids that were already prepared. But I put my little uh, guide clip in, I'm gonna push my braids in. Now I'm, again, I'm gonna put my braids in with a little dimple on the bottom. Some people put them the other way. I put it with a dimple on the bottom, especially if I've trimmed this, because it gives more of a more distance to fold your braid around, and it's not such a sharp fold at the front, because actually the braid is going on a slightly larger radius around the guide. So you can push that in. Sometimes I use again a little tip of my Allen wrench just to push it all the way in, like so. And then let's say my guide was all nicely fully prepared. Uh, as you can see in my other video. And then I need to get my braids folded and nice and flat onto the bottom of my guide. Well, some people bend them really tightly around the front of the guide, and then they find it very hard to get the braids to sit nice and flat. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna bend it nice and loosely around the front of the guide, leaving a small gap around the front here. So I haven't bent it right up against the the tip of the guide. I've just sort of loosely bent it round like so. And then I flatten it down. You can see it's still got quite a bit of spring in it. So I'm gonna short, I'm gonna flatten that spring a little bit. And I can do that now by pushing on the front of the braid like that with my thumb. And now you can see how it sits much, much flatter on the guide. That's because I didn't bend it really tightly to start with. I bent it fairly loosely around in a large radius. And then finally, I finish it off by pushing it down like so. If that still doesn't work, you can put your thumb on the braid and you can push the braid and wiggle it sideways a little bit like this, but pushing slightly forward and then pushing the braid back again and you get it to sit nice and flat on the guide. Now, you might be asking, what were these other tools for? Well, my little braid brush there, what was that tool for? And what was that tool for? Well, you can see that the braids have finished fairly near the end of my guide. Now, sometimes uh, that might be a little bit too long because as the guide turns, the braid can short out on the chassis, which again, you don't want. So you might want to trim the braids. Now, if you're preparing lots of braids in advance, then this tool is really nice because I will show you. Let's take another braid. Remember, flatten the little pimple in there. Could have used those or these. Trim it shorter, like so. Fold it round the piano wire, like so. Just flatten it a little bit. And crimp it shut, making sure it's folded nice and square and straight like so flatten out your braid like so turn it over again you can see some of these operations can be done in a different order they don't all have to be done in the same order just whatever feels more comfortable holding it in your hand so flattening that out like so. Again, check thickness. Six one, a bit thinner at the 
in the middle there. So I need to flatten it a little bit there. And there. Check the thickness again. So it's within 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of a mil. That's fine. Now, this tool here is really useful because you can adjust it. This bit slides. And if you put your braid into the recess on the tool, you can use the tool to help you set your braid length. And then you can use a pair of scissors and you can just trim off the braid so that they would all be the same length. So if you're preparing lots of braids together, that's a really useful tool. This tool was bought from Atan. I think MS slot parts do one like it as well. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to leave my braid fairly long. And then you ask, maybe what's this tool for? Well, again, depending on how hard your braids are, some braids need uh, end up sort of very tightly woven and when you're racing around the track they're not making they're not picking up very well and they tend to sort of burn away on the surface so what you tend to do is use one of these braid brushes you can use just a wire brush is okay but this one's really nice because it's it's sort of got much uh, more pronounced uh, little bits of wire uh, on the handle and then I tend to hold it just away from the end and you run it over the end of the braid front and back and it just helps separate some of the weave on the braid and makes your braid slightly thicker on the end but the general thing is it separates the weave of the braid a little bit at the tip and that separation of the weave means that it picks up better on the braid or the tape on your track so then I can flatten my braid down again using that technique of pushing it around the front I can put a slight bend in the back of the braid like so and that braid is all nicely done, all prepared uh, and then maybe you need to watch my next video of how you would actually prepare the rest of the guide. And then there's also a video on lead wires and preparing your lead wires, soldering your lead wires to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, there are plenty of people that have watched my last video and haven't subscribed. But thank you to those who have and look forward to seeing you in the next one.